Good Monday morning. Well, we're almost finished with our parentheses. We're going to end that up and then step out of it and get back into the judgments as they occur. So we're here at the very beginning of Revelation chapter 15. Remember the parentheses started in chapter 12 and it's going to end up here in 15 verse four. But let's start here. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and amazing, seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last, for with them the wrath of God is finished. And also those who had conquered the beast in its image and the number of its name were standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the lamb. Remember, Revelation, it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And here they're telling us at the end of the tribulation, when they realize the wrath of God is finished, there's this beautiful song of the lamb that this, that this parentheses ends with, with the saints of God worshiping around the sea of glass that has this purifying fire flowing from it. Great and amazing are your deeds, O Jesus. So Lord God, the Almighty, just and true of your way or your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. So this whole parenthesis ends with this beautiful declaration and song of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. And then we start again with the judgments. Remember, we had the, the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, and now we get into the final seven bowl judgments. And it says, after this, I looked. So now we're back inside the scene. We're out of the parentheses. We're coming back from the end. I looked in the sanctuary of the tent of the witness. The tabernacle in heaven was opened. Remember, we had seen this, this Holy of Holies, this, this temple in heaven, this Ark of the Covenant. We've seen this back earlier before our parentheses started. And out of the sanctuary, so the scene is set and the action is coming back into play. And out of the sanctuary came the seven angels with the seven plagues. So they are announcing that the seven last judgments are coming. They are clothed in pure bright linen with golden sashes around their chest and one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever and the sanctuary was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power and no one could enter the sanctuary until the seven plagues of the seven angels were finished wow this is one more visual I I it's so powerful. This is not the first time in scripture the tabernacle has been filled with smoke. It was filled with smoke when Moses was at the tent of meeting. It was filled with smoke when Solomon dedicated the first temple. It was filled with smoke when Isaiah was in the temple. And now we see it here again because it is always representative of the manifest presence of the living God. And let me tell you something, friends. When those final seven judgments come, it is going to be the manifested presence of God. And yet from this moment, no one, it, I, this is so interesting to me that from this moment, no one is able to enter into this temple where the mercy seat is. Now, remember the Ark of the Covenant that sat in the temple that Solomon built held the mercy of God. It always represented where the mercy dwelt. And yet in this moment, no one is allowed to enter because there is no more mercy to cover sin. And I've never had this thought before in reading the book of Revelation. And honestly, it was confirmed to me because when I read one of my resources that I've used for this study, they said the exact same thing. And so, I, the, the thought that it made me ponder was God knows that this was the last amount of wrath to fall on the earth and he knew how severe the wrath would be. 
and the Godhead, the Trinity is sealed. They have sealed themselves inside of this tabernacle. And it made me wonder, why did they not want anybody to enter? Why, why would it be so important that John record the fact that no one was allowed to enter? Could it be that the Godhead was grieving in this moment, that there was such exceptional grief in the fact that this judgment had to come on the earth and that the mercy seat was no longer available? Could it be that the tabernacle is sealed because the Trinity wants a quiet moment of their own grief? If Jesus wept over Jerusalem, I am confident God weeps over the fact that anyone would be separated him from eternity. It's a sobering moment when God shuts a door. And yet in this moment, he clearly does. Mm -hmm.